The wilderness was an essential part of their preparation to fulfill the purposes for which God chose them. He wanted to train them and test them. He wanted them to trust him. And he wanted to bring them to a place of great blessing, the promised land. Not only just the physical land, but also a place of relationship with him. Where they, many times he says, and I will be their God and they will be my people. Mm. And that is God's heart. In fact, in Deuteronomy 8, it says, he says this about his people. Or and this is when Moses was, I think it was Moses, was going to be, um, was, it's shortly before Moses was going to, going, to, going to die. I think I'm right on that. He says, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what's in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from us. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not sweat during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. He led you through the vast, dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land, with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of a hard rock. He gave you manna to eat, something your ancestors had known, to humble and test you, so that in the end, it might go well with you. God's heart was to learn that they could trust him to provide. And that's also what he needs to do in us that we don't trust in just the provision, but we trust in the provider. And when we are blessed, that we stay close to him, that we don't forget he is the source of our blessing, that we don't begin to think, wow, I got here because of my hard work or because I'm so smart. No, we are there, we are there because of his blessing. We hold tightly to the one who blesses, not just the blessing itself. And the wilderness also prepares us for that. And if we want to enter the front of the front stand of blessing, we have to be prepared for battle. We will have battles with temptations. Sometimes those temptations come out of our own heart. Sometimes the temptations come from outside. Sometimes the battle of the saints and what the enemy is trying to do in our, to distract us, to get us off the path. And if we want, if we want to follow hard on with God, if we want to be part of what he's doing, we will need to face battles. We learn courage, faith, perseverance, we learn to trust him even when we can't see what the outcome will be. But And the biggest battles don't begin on the outside. They begin right here in our hearts. Sometimes that's the place where the battle is actually won and lost. Whether we can face our fears, take courage to walk through those fears, to face risks, to make sacrifices, to claim and walk in truth, even when it feels like nobody else is with us. The battle starts right here in our hearts. And there are certain lessons that we, have, that we learn 
that we can't learn any other way except by going through that wilderness time. And so it can be a, a place of great opportunity. The things that look like obstacles can actually be opportunities for us to grow and to, to actually go to the place that we really want to go. God is not as much interested in fixing our problems as he is in changing our lives. And sometimes rather than changing my circumstances, he's wanting to meet me in those circumstances and change me. I can't control what goes on around me. I can't control politics. I can't control what people say. I can't control what people do. I can't control sickness, death, other challenges. But I can stay in relationship with God and face those circumstances. The outcome is up to us. Will we come through the wilderness? And what will we be at the end? Will I come out bitter? Or will I be, come out better? Will my pain be wasted? Or will it bring gain and blessing and wisdom for having gone through it? And when we go through those battles, then we can turn and help others when they are in the wilderness. You know, Romans 8, 18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us.
And so I think that we should not expect that we won't have a wilderness too. And I think if we follow Jesus, there will be times when we experience the wilderness. We're not exempt. John 16, 33, Jesus told his disciples before he was crucified, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have trouble and suffering, but take courage, I have conquered the world. And sometimes in our world today, you know, um, so much emphasis is put on, oh, we need to be happy and fulfilled and joyful all the time. But I don't know that God's purpose is always to make us happy. I think God's purpose is to make us holy, to be like Jesus, to be like his son, Jesus. In fact, in Romans, 28, 28, it says, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Because those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That's God's desire for us, to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And you know, if we're going to be transformed into the image of Jesus, we also need to remember Jesus suffered when he was here on earth. And so how can we expect or how can we plan that we would not have to suffer sometimes? Because Jesus suffered. And if we're following him, there will be times when we will suffer too. It's not a happy topic. And I don't hear a lot of sermons about suffering. It's not a popular thing to talk about. But we need to talk about it. Because when we're there in the wilderness, it can feel really lonely. It can feel like nobody understands. And we even feel guilty sometimes talking about it, thinking, oh, we should be victorious. And sometimes I'm guessing that a lot of us face the wilderness more than we're willing to talk about. So how do we come alongside each other and help each other through those times? Jesus himself suffered when he was here on earth. He talks about that in Hebrews 5, 7. In fact, it's really an interesting verse, a challenging verse. It says, during his earthly life, Christ offered both requests and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his devotion. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And by being perfected in his faith, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Did you catch that? Jesus offered up quests and supplication with loud cries and tears. God hears our tears, and he honors our tears. Jesus himself offered up tears, so I don't think we have to hide them when they come. When life is hard, just know that you're not being targeted and singled out for some kind of punishment. The more serious we are about following Jesus, the more we will have to deny ourselves to fight different kinds of temptations in order to follow him. And that's not easy sometimes. Let's look a little bit at what is the purpose for God's wilderness, for the wilderness that God allows us to be in. And we're gonna look more at this uh, on the 15th. But just a few things today to keep in mind. And sometimes when we're in the middle of the wilderness, our heart just cries out, why? Why does he allow people to experience the wilderness? Why does he allow me? Why does he allow the people close to me? Sometimes 
We don't always hear an answer. But there are things we can learn from this picture and sometimes from our own experience and experience of those who've gone through the wilderness. You know, Jesus came to create a new future for the broken and the lost. And in Matthew 3, 13 to 17, that's the passage where we find Jesus going to John to be baptized. And the heavens opened, and the Spirit came in the form of a dove and rested on Jesus. And then a voice from heaven said, This is my dear son. In him I take great delight. And immediately after that, in Matthew 4, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus didn't go into the wilderness because he was not pleasing to God, because he had done something wrong. He was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tested and to be prepared. And that's one of the things God wants to do for us when we are in a wilderness. Even Jesus needed to be prepared, to be matured, to be strengthened, to know how to resist the work of the enemy. God is still doing the work of saving people and bringing people out of darkness. You know, that Isaiah 61, 1, 4 says it well. Jesus came to preach good news, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, 